This man took a bank hostage. The reason why will shock you. So we start out with two cops dragging a man out of a building. Then the cops sit him on the ground, uncuff him, hand him his property, and leave him there. A woman approaches him and hands him his glasses which he puts on. His face is bruised. Okay, this movie is based on a true story. Next, we see some random images. A guy feeding birds, two boys skating, a guy breakdancing, a guy playing with the violin. Then we end with the guy from the beginning, Brian, smoking and maintaining eye contact with a dog. Later in the evening, he's walking by the road and playing a game with his daughter over the phone before he runs out of credit. He gets to his room, freshens up, packs some stuff into his bag, and heads out. He walks into a Wells Fargo, then pauses to take a smoke in front of the building before heading inside. He steps inside, looks around slowly, goes to pick up a form, and then joins the queue. Riveting stuff. He's really sweating now and looking around for security cameras when a teller calls to answer him. He wants to withdraw $25 from his account, and the teller, Rosa Diaz, is being so nice to him. I love her. She's telling him a cute little story about her daughter as she hands him his money. So sweet. Anyway, after that cute conversation, he takes a paper, writes something on it, passes it to her. Oh, I see. My guy is a sharp shooter sliding his number to her like that. But from the way her smile changes to a look of fear, it can't be. Oh, damn. He says he has a bomb. She then asks what he wants her to do. He says, trigger the alarm. She's like, really? And he says, I need you to call the coppers right now. Meanwhile, another woman notices the look on Rose's face and immediately tells the customer she was attending to leave. She goes to tell other people to leave and then goes to the door and stops customers from entering. Brian notices her now. She tries to get more people to leave when Brian moves towards her and asks, who's in charge here? And she replies that she's the manager and her name is Karen. Just kidding, but wouldn't that be ironic? Her name is Estelle Valerie. Rosa has still not been able to get through to 911, by the way. He tells Estelle to let the customers leave and then lock the front and back doors. While she's doing that, Rosa finally gets through to 911 and Brian jumps over the counter to speak to the operative himself. He apologizes to Rosa, by the way. Gentleman or simp? I'm not sure. <laughs> he introduces himself to the 911 operative and says he has a bomb and will off himself and everyone else in here if his needs are not met. What are his needs? He wants back the disability check that was stolen from him. The operative asks him what he looks like and he says he's black, but not affiliated with any group. She asks him if he can let the employees leave, but he says no. As long as everybody stays calm, nobody gets hurt. They ask him what kind of clothing he has on and he gets paranoid asking if they have a sniper on him. He drops the phone and goes to disconnect all security cameras and close all the blinds. Then he hides behind a bench. From there, he shouts to the manager to call everyone. Everyone. He wants the fire trucks, the press people, and even the X-Men. He says everybody thinks he's playing, but he's not. He's now talking to himself saying he doesn't want to be clapped before he tells his side of the story. Then he tells the ladies to contact the news network and have them come down here. He asks for the light to be turned off and then asks for a negotiator. He asks Rosa to close the blinds behind her. As he does that, he apologizes to her. This guy is exceptionally apologetic. Then he runs around the office and then to a telephone where he talks to the operative again. He asks Rosa to stand in front of him to act as a shield so he won't get shot. He's now assuring her he won't hurt her as he starts a random conversation with her, asking her what she likes and all of that. He now asks Estelle if they've been robbed before and she says yes, once. He asks how it ended and she says he was arrested. He asks, they didn't kill him? She says no. So he replies, he had to be white. Society moment. He then asks her to go call the network. As she moves to her desk to do that, he tells Rosie he wants to make a call to his people to tell them what's going on so they won't be worried. It keeps going to voicemail though. Then a call comes in. A customer wants to speak with Bridget about her 401k. He tells her that Bridget is not around but he can take a message for her. He's taking the call like the most polite customer care agent ever and the women are shocked. I am too. I mean, I've never been robbed by someone so polite. To be fair, I have nothing worth stealing. Usually makes them pretty mad. At this point, we see some armed officers positioning themselves outside the bank. Brian now ducks behind the counter and as he's hitting some buttons on the phone, Rosa tells him she can get him the money he needs. It's sitting right up there, she says. But Brian says he doesn't want the bank's money. He just wants the cash that those people took from him. While they're having that conversation, they hear a loud bang and Brian immediately falls on top of Rosa because he thought it was shooting, but it's only an employee trying to get into the bank. Sir, read the room. Estelle shouts at him to leave and he does. He apologizes profusely to Rosa for falling on top of her while Estelle is still on the phone. Brian goes back to the phone and is asking why he still doesn't have a negotiator. They tell him to hold on, but he seems to be running out of patience so he takes out the bomb in his bag and holds it in his hand and puts his hand in the air. Estelle is begging him not to do it, saying they have kids, but he's shouting on the phone that all he needs is a negotiator. He wants to talk. They just keep telling him to hold on, but they just keep putting him on hold. Old. He drops the phone and apologizes again and asks them if they want to use the restroom. Estelle says yes and goes. Of course, she doesn't really want to be. She gets in there and texts Rosa. She tells her they need to leave and that she'll try to unlock the door. After some time, Brian tells Rosa to go check on Estelle in the bathroom and make sure she's good. He's now connected with a negotiator. Brian tells him he just wants his money. The negotiator tries to get him to come out, but that doesn't work. As they're on the phone, they see a news truck pull up outside, so Brian tells Estelle to turn the TV on. He tells the negotiator that he'll blow up the place if his demands are not met. But just before he drops the phone,
phone. He asks them to connect him to his daughter since he has not been able to reach her. After he drops the phone, he asks Rosa if she thought the conversation was good, and she gave it a frightened 5 stars. This guy is really hilarious. Now we see his daughter, Kaya, walking into her mom's room and reaching for her phone, which is ringing. She tells her mom who is sleeping that someone must really want to talk to her, so she picks up the phone. It's Brian. He's telling her he might go to jail for a long time depending on how things pan out, but she's taking him with a pinch of salt and asking him if he's off his meds. Oh, that explains everything. He says he's serious though, and that everything he does is for her and his daughter. He now tells her he's holding up a bank and demands to speak to his daughter. While that call is going on, the woman in the bank are texting and trying to devise a way to run. Estelle asks Rosa to keep her eyes on her. She'll soon open the door and they have to run. Brian is now speaking with his daughter, telling her he loves her and apologizing to her. He's explaining the situation in hand the best way he can. He says when people steal from you, you just have to find a way to get it back. Then he says once he does, he'll get her a puppy. She hears that and she just rounds off the call and hangs up. That's all she needed to hear. He then drops the phone and he's looking at Rosa now, telling her she looks scared. She says she is. I mean, who wouldn't be? But he promises her that if he dies today, he'll die alone. Then he hears the sound of a helicopter and that takes him back to his military days. But it's a short trip and he's back to the present. Then that customer from last time calls again for Bridget. Brian is not so nice this time. He yells that he's currently robbing the bank and she should not call back. Estelle is now talking to Brian, telling him she can relate to his predicament. Same thing happened to her ex-husband. She tells him she's scared, but she still feels compassion for him. She has a son herself. Now he gets a little paranoid. He asks her if she told him that story about her family because she thinks he's slow. Apparently, a lot of people think of him as a fool, but she reassures him. She says she's just scared. He then asks for the TV to be turned off. Outside, we see a cop named Bernard getting strapped up and briefed. Basically, everybody is out here. Back inside now, and Brian puts a call to WSB and gives them a tip that he's at Wells Fargo holding up the bank with a bomb. They quickly set up a camera and start interviewing him. They ask for his social security number and he gets paranoid again and says he can't give it to them. I mean, why would he anyway? They ask where he got the bomb and he says he can't give that information either. While they're talking, the police are patched onto the call and Officer Bernard is asking why the suspect is talking to a reporter. Brian just keeps telling his story of how he was in the Marines, went on tours, and had an honorable discharge. The reporter, Lisa, asks about the VA and we see a very beautiful switch of scenes. He flashes back to the VA's office where they're giving him a tough time. He's basically asking for his disability check. If not, he'd be on the streets. She hands him a flyer for people who are food and housing insecure, and he stands up and leaves the office. He thinks about joining the queue outside, but it's just so incredibly long. That queue is literally endless. Now we're back to the phone call. He's saying he's not a psychopath. He then asks the reporter to make the interview live. He literally begs, but the woman is now telling him that they won't allow his children and her children to watch him blow up the bank on live TV. Understandable. We now come to outside the bank. Different military guys are taking positions. Snipers are setting up. Some guys are jumping over the fence. All that stuff. Then, an FBI agent calls Cassandra and asks her for her current address. Next thing, we see agents break into Brian's room and start searching everywhere, but they find nothing. No sign of an accomplice either. Then, Brian starts telling the reporter how his brother put a hit out on him. Apparently, he put 20k on his head. Just 20k to get your own blood clap. He's not even worthy to be called Judas. Judas put 30. While he's talking, Rosa texts Estelle and tells her that Brian is crazy and they're going to die. Before Estelle can even reply, Brian tells the reporter he wants to be in front of a camera. Trust me, it's not worth it. While they're trying to set it up, Bernard goes out to make sure it doesn't happen. He tells the reporters to stay away from the bank and even stay away from the phones. Lisa asks him to go to a window, and he says no. I mean, obviously. He asks them if they have a long lens. Bernard, who is a sergeant by the way, now goes to a major and tells him, in my professional opinion, this is some bullshit. Oh, you got some balls on you, brother. But well, it works. The major allows him to do his thing. Back inside the bank, Estelle is now typing a message to her son on her notes app. Basically, she's telling him goodbye. She thinks she's going to rip in peace. Bernard now gets in a car and drives away while Brian is losing it inside the bank because he still hasn't gotten the attention he needs. In this day and age, if you want attention, you gotta do some cool dances on TikTok. He now pulls something on the contraption in his hand and it starts beeping and a red light starts blinking. The reporter tells him a negotiator wants to talk to him, so he turns off the beeping thing, puts his contraption back in his bag, apologizes to the woman, again, and walks off. Now, we're seeing little Kaya creep up on her mother as she's watching the news and pacing around. She sees her dad's face on the news and calls out, Daddy, chill. Now, her mother's holding and cuddling her. The woman from the VA's office also looks at the TV and sees Brian, and she has a look of shock on her face. We're now back at the bank and Brian receives a call from Bernard, who starts off empathizing with him. He then asks what he can do for him. Brian says he just wants his money back, that's all. Brian then finds out that Bernard is also a Marine, so he makes a little Marine joke and they both laugh. Something about watching your best friend's legs get blown off. Real funny stuff. Bernard says his responsibility is to make sure Brian leaves there alive, but Brian is like, nah, I know I'm dying today. Cole. We now flash back to the VA's office where Brian is thrown to the ground and cuffed by 
the cops. That's the story he's telling Bernard now. He's saying they've taken everything from him. According to him, the VA owes him $892.34. And Bernard goes, that's it? And tells him he's worth more than that. But Brian says he's worth nothing. Relatable. Brian says he's going to die tonight and nobody will care why. While they're still on the call, the major comes in and tells Bernard to move back to the truck. Bernard gets out of the car. He tells Brian he'll call Cassandra and then also asks him to release one of the ladies. Brian asks, what about the money? And Bernard gives his word as a Marine that if he lets one of the ladies go, they'll sort this out. But the typically paranoid Brian doesn't agree. He says once he opens the door to let one go, the military men outside will come in and crack open his head and drink his brains with a straw. I made up the last part. They get off the call and Bernard yells at the major to never disrespect him or cut him off when he's talking. Oh wow, but he ended with sir, so I guess that's cool, right? He calls Cassandra and they're FaceTiming. He asks her if Brian has ever been violent. She says no, and she asks him why the FBI are on their way to her house, and he says it's just procedure. But he says if they do anything she doesn't like, she should just call him. Before they get off the call, Cassandra tells Bernard to tell Brian that Caius has not to do anything stupid. Too late. As she's getting off the call, men from the FBI arrive at her house. Bernard calls Brian back and asks him to release one of the ladies, but he says no again. He's beginning to enjoy their company, and he needs his money first. Brian is now calling Cassandra, but the FBI agents tell her not to answer it. Just before he calls again, Bernard calls back and asks to speak to one of the ladies. He gives the phone to Rosa, but she's too scared to talk, so he hands it over to Estelle, who pretty much yells that they are not okay when Bernard asks how everyone is doing. He tells her to stay calm and give the phone back to Brian. He asks him if there's anything he'd like, and he asks him for some smokes. Bernard says he'll get it and bring it to him. He drops the call, and Estelle is now trying to be proactive. She tells Brian that, since the negotiator and other guys are wasting too much time, she'll just put the money directly in his account. But Brian says that's not what he wants. If that's what he cared about, he'd have had them give it to him when he walked into the bank. Estelle is now crying and begging him to let her put the money in her account so she can be able to look her son in the eye and tell him she did her best to make sure Brian didn't die. She's telling him she needs him not to die. She seems to have gotten through to him. He's shedding a tear and tells her to call his daughter. But Bernard thinks that if Brian finds out she put the money in his account and not the VA, it might trigger him. You can never know. He advises that whoever's talking to her should tell her to stop. And in fact, they should kill all bank communications except the phones. The major gives out the orders ASAP. What Estelle is trying to do doesn't work. Then Bernard calls Brian and tells him he's on CNN. Estelle confirms it on her phone and hands it to him. Bernard is now telling him that he has the VA where he wants them now, so everything he says and does from here matters. He hangs up and tells the ladies that one of them can go. Lisa from WBS is now meeting with the woman from the VA's office, who shows her Brian's file. The long and short of the conversation is that the system is rigged to take money from people like Brian somehow. Anyhow, Bernard goes to get the pack of cigarettes and is ready for the exchange. A pack of smokes for one of the folks. Fair bargain. And a tight rhyme. Inside the bank, the woman cannot decide who should leave. They say they can't leave each other there. Really sweet women. But Brian decides Rosa will leave because he thinks it's better if he has a senior manager with him. I knew he was simping for Rosa. So he gives them the formation for how the exchange will go down. After which he heads to the bathroom where he calls his daughter and tells her he's going to be okay. He tells her to pray with him. Estelle is trying to make her escape. She opens the door and calls on Rosa to join her, but she's so scared. She's rooted to the spot. She even pees herself. Brian is still on the phone with his daughter and he's reading a prayer from a psalm in the Bible amidst tears. Kaya is telling him to breathe. Such a brilliant girl. Finally, he tells her to always do right by people and treat them well. Then he says he will go ahead and let the woman out. But all Kaya is concerned about is her puppy. He comes back out and you can see Estelle is mad at Rosa for not making the run with her. But I respect the loyalty there, because she could have just gone without her, but that would have been against the CIS code. By the way, the officials are getting closer to the door. Brian then says thank you to the woman, apologizes to them again, and while he's talking, a sniper takes a shot. Bernard is distraught while the rest of the officers make their way into the building. The FBI agents at Cassandra's house get a call they just get up and leave. She asks them if Brian is dead, but they don't answer. Bernard is calling Cassandra, but she doesn't pick up. She's outside her house with Kaya. A robot is now navigating through the bank, and it retrieves the bag from Brian's lifeless body. Bernard heads inside and squats over Brian's body with the pack of cigarettes in his hand, and he picks up a little jewelry with the sign of a cross that belonged to Brian. Now you know what's crazy? While he's inside, he's told by his partner that there was no bomb all along. He was never going to blow up the bank. He just wanted the money that was owed to him. We now see Estelle and Rosa back with their families. It surely was one hell of a day for these ladies. Bernard heads home with the cigarettes and the cross and puts it on his shelf. We end with the scene where Brian is talking to his daughter and then carries her. Remember, this is a true story, right? And as we're informed, after everything that happened, Brian's family has still not received payments from the VA. Oh my dear Uncle Sam. Moral of the story, it really do be like that at times.